Hello everyone. Thank you for joining me again. I looked in my freezer last night and discovered that I am almost out of freezer meals. So that's what we are going to do today. We're going to make freezer chicken enchiladas, an easy shepherd's pie, freezer croissant breakfast sandwiches, and two chicken marinades. Before we get started, I need to chop up some cilantro, some parsley, and dice up an onion. All of today's recipes will be linked in the description box below. On to the freezer chicken enchiladas. So I have a large-ish bowl here, and I need about two cups of diced, already cooked chicken. This is chicken from a rotisserie chicken. Then we need some enchilada sauce. Now, we will need two and a half cups of the sauce in total, and that is 591 mils. We're going to start with a half cup we can add to the chicken a half cup of shredded cheddar cheese. We're going to call that a half cup. A half cup or 120 mils of sour cream. Cilantro, about a quarter cup. Chopped green chilies from a four ounce can. That's about 113 grams. And then we want to combine all of these ingredients. I know that several of you ordered these spurtles or wooden mixing utensils. Aren't they wonderful? And you can put them in the dishwasher. So I have 12 six inch flour tortillas here. And to make them more pliable, going to warm them just briefly in the microwave. And of course, I've wrapped them in a towel. My tortillas are nicely warmed. It took about 45 seconds in the microwave. And now we can start forming the enchiladas. I'm placing the filling somewhat towards the edge of the tortilla. If you place the filling directly in the center of a tortilla, will be very hard to roll up the thing. Now the last time we made enchiladas, we froze and baked them in this 9 by 13 baking dish. The only problem was that the very next day, I wanted to use this baking dish, but I did not want to eat the enchiladas just yet. So I think I have a solution. I'm going to line the pan with parchment. I crumpled up the parchment to make it easy to fit the contours of the pan. So we will see how this works out. I'm going to put a layer of the enchilada sauce. Spread it out. We can add the enchiladas. I was only able to fit eight of the enchiladas in this dish. Not a problem because I have another baking dish we can use for the remaining tortillas. And I want to add sauce over the top. Top with cheese. I'm going to put the remaining enchiladas in this little baking dish. I don't need to line it because I don't often use a dish this small. So I need my enchilada sauce. Coat the bottom. Add the enchiladas. 
top with more sauce. And finish with queso or cheese. I've decided that these four enchiladas will be our dinner tonight. So I don't have to freeze this. This one I will freeze just as it is. And when it's solidly frozen, I will remove the enchiladas and their parchment. And then I will wrap them tightly with cling film plus aluminum foil. And I will try to show you that a little later in this video. So let's move on to the easy shepherd's pie. Now, a shepherd's pie is actually made with lamb. I'm using ground beef today, so we would call this a cottage pie. And among the ingredients are peas, carrots, and corn. I'm using frozen because they're just very convenient. I need one and a half cups total for the vegetables. So I'm going to weigh this out for my European friends and my Canadian friends. Two hundred eleven grams or thereabouts. We need to saute the onions that we diced earlier and then to brown the ground beef. So let's move over to the stovetop. Two tablespoons of butter, salted or unsalted, as you please. In goes the onion. And we will saute the onion in the butter just until the onion softens. The onion has softened, so now we can add the ground beef. This is about one pound. All right, the ground beef is cooked. And I did drain off just a little bit of the fat. So now we can add a nice pinch of the parsley that we chopped earlier. A good pinch of thyme. Some garlic powder. Some dried rosemary. You'll be amazed at what dried rosemary does to this meat mixture. Stir those ingredients in. Now we can add one cup or 236 mils of beef broth. And we need to bring this to a boil. I almost forgot to add salt and pepper. And I've decided to add a generous splash of Worcester sauce. And to thicken the works, I'm adding six ounces or 170 grams of good old tomato paste. Stir that in. So I am deviating from the written recipe here. The written recipe in this case is merely my guide. And finally, we can stir in the frozen vegetables. As you can see, that tomato paste really thickened up the sauce. The mixture smells just wonderful. I make no apologies for the mashed potatoes we are about to make. I use potato flakes, which are nothing more than dehydrated potatoes. They cook up perfectly every time if you follow this recipe. So I have one and three-fourths cups or 414 mils of water, three tablespoons of butter, three-fourths of a teaspoon of salt, one cup or 236 grams of milk, and two cups, or about 110 grams, of the potato flakes. 
Now these are the flakes that you and I bought together in bulk at the, Can at the general store in Canaan, New York. These are the mashed potatoes that I serve even at Thanksgiving. Now, I have potatoes up in my garden. I think they're ready for harvest. But I always save my homegrown potatoes for things like pomana and various gratins. Mashed potatoes, I always use the potato flakes. And then this goes into the microwave for exactly eight minutes. This is hot. All we have to do is stir. Now we can transfer the meat mixture to a nine by nine inch baking dish. This is a very hearty, very comforting dish. The bowl is still very hot. And then of course we top the meat mixture with the mashed potato mixture. Spread out the potatoes. I'm using an offset spatula here. We need to let this cool completely and then I will cover it with cling film and heavy duty aluminum foil and pop it into the freezer. And when I want cottage pie for dinner, I will take this out of the freezer a good 24 hours ahead of time, let it thaw, and then bake it at 375 degrees Fahrenheit or 190 degrees Celsius for about 30 minutes. For the freezer croissant breakfast sandwiches, we need four large eggs without any eggshell. We're going to whisk these. To the eggs, I'm adding 60 mils or a quarter cup of half and half. You might prefer heavy cream here or just plain milk. So these are going to be turned into creamy scrambled eggs. Then I need a pinch of salt and some black pepper. Let's scramble these on the cooktop. A splash of olive oil. Add the eggs. And I'm going to whisk these over low heat just until they're set. And the eggs are perfectly set and scrambled. While the eggs are cooling, I'm going to take eight mini croissants and split them in half. So these little freezer sandwiches are intended more for a snack, I think, rather than a full meal. You could always play around with this recipe. Double the amount of eggs and other filling ingredients and then use full-size croissant. This is the first time that I have ever purchased mini croissant and I was very surprised to see just how many they are. I mean, they are very small. And we need some cheese. I'm using smoked howda cheese here, but you could use cheddar or some other cheese that you like. And some ham. And there's one little sandwich. This could make nice little cocktail snacks. Now the recipe says to wrap each sandwich tightly in cling film and then freeze and to reheat, remove the cling film, wrap the sandwich in a paper towel, and heat it in the microwave for two to three minutes, which seems an awfully long time to me for sandwiches that are this small. 
I should think these would be heated through at 60 seconds. Well, the recipe said this makes eight sandwiches, but I have enough egg here to do my remaining mini croissant. I bought a package of 12 and then I ate one just for quality control. Yeah, this could be breakfast for someone who eats like a bird, but I do not eat like a bird. So these would be a midday snack or maybe a cocktail appetizer. And I think instead of microwaving them, I would bake them in the oven. This way the croissants will crisp up. I am able to fit seven of these sandwiches in this Pyrex container. And then I have this very shallow Pyrex dish. Yes, I think we can fit four in here. I'm going to try baking one of these freezer sandwiches in a future video. So I hope you will subscribe so you won't miss that episode. Spoiler alert. I baked some of these little sandwiches in my toaster oven. All they needed was 10 minutes at 400 degrees Fahrenheit or 200 degrees Celsius. The sandwiches were incredibly delicious. I will definitely make them again and again. We are certainly accomplishing a lot today. Now we are going to make the yogurt curry chicken. Now you need one pound of chicken. It could be chicken thighs or chicken breasts. I'm using chicken thighs today. And we need lime for both of the marinades that we're making today. So I have labeled my bags. Marinated chicken is one of my absolute favorite freezer dinners. Now, I will link all of these recipes that we made today in the description box below. I probably mentioned that earlier. So now we need a quarter cup of yogurt. This is just plain yogurt, not Greek yogurt. Then we need roughly two teaspoons of lime juice. We will call that two teaspoons. A quarter teaspoon of salt. Two teaspoons of curry powder. And one teaspoon brown sugar. And we can mix up these ingredients right in the bag. And here are the chicken thighs. The chicken thighs I'm using are boneless and skinless. And then we simply mush or smush everything together so that the chicken is coated with the marinade. Now the beauty of these marinades is that you put the chicken with its marinade coating in the freezer and then a good 24 hours before you wish to serve the marinated chicken, you let it thaw in the refrigerator and as the chicken thaws, it will become marinated. Now for the cilantro lime chicken marinade, we need two tablespoons of oil. 
You could use olive oil. I'm using avocado oil. Two tablespoons of lime juice. One and a half tablespoons of honey. I warmed my honey in the microwave just so it would pour easily. A half cup of chopped cilantro leaves. This is the cilantro that we chopped or minced earlier today. Two cloves of minced garlic or two teaspoons of garlic paste. And a quarter teaspoon of salt. Once again, mix right in the bag. Add the chicken, which again is one pound. I love these kitchen tweezers. I bought a set of them. And I can link them in the description below if you're interested. And as before, just seal the bag and smush or massage until the chicken is nicely coated. Now, I wanted to show you the enchiladas that we froze earlier. Now, I froze them in this baking dish, but I put them on top of parchment. So now I can remove the whole thing. It's solidly frozen. And then, to avoid freezer burn, I need to wrap this in cling film. And then wrap it in a layer of heavy duty aluminum foil. And again, the reason for the double wrapping is to avoid freezer burn. When I wish to bake this, I will remove the aluminum foil and the cling film. I can even remove the parchment and place it back into the baking dish and bake it off. And the temperature at which the enchiladas bake is 375 degrees Fahrenheit or 190 degrees Celsius for 25 to 30 minutes. So let's look at everything we made today. The freezer enchiladas. We made the shepherd's pie, which is really a cottage pie. We made the freezer croissant breakfast sandwiches. We made the cilantro lime chicken and the yogurt curry chicken. I forgot to mention that the baking temperature for the marinated chicken is 425 degrees Fahrenheit or 220 degrees Celsius for about 25 minutes. Let me put everything into the freezer again and then we can have a little taste of the chicken enchiladas. This is piping hot. Freezer chicken enchilada, but there's nothing freezer about it right now. This, my friends, is spectacular. That filling mixture we made with the sour cream has just given this a super creamy texture. The chicken is super tender. It's just one of the best things I've ever tasted. I hope you will give it a try someday. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today as we made all of these wonderful freezer meals. We do a lot of cooking, gardening, and home beautification projects on this channel. So if you have not yet subscribed, I hope you will do so. I will put a couple of my other videos at the end of this one that you can enjoy between now and my next upload. Until then, please treat yourself extra well, and I will see you in the next episode. Bye, friends. Amazing.